Good evening, and welcome to day three of NAU Said Yes. Tonight, we will be speaking about helping you understand college expenses, financial aid, and scholarships. We will also be giving you some tools to help you plan and budget for the upcoming academic year. I'm Esther Guayad, and I'm the Associate Director of the Office of Scholarships and Financial Aid. Hello, I'm Chris Lofquist, and I am a manager coordinator in the Office of Scholarships and Financial Aid in the Client Services area. So let's get started with talking about some of the information that we're going to be sharing today. And we do want to talk about um, some of the myths that we all hear about financial aid. So the cost of college for education, it's just not worth it. And we do know that if we look at the studies and we find the information over time, a college education is worth it. So you can see that the benefits um, outweigh the disadvantages, of course, more opportunity for a better job, a better salary over the lifetime of your work, and better opportunities, greater knowledge, and better opportunities for a broader perspective across the board. Some other myths that we know a lot about that come up there very often is, well, my family's income is just too high, so I won't qualify for anything. It's true that you may not qualify for gift aid, but you may be eligible for scholarships, and the student will certainly be eligible for the federally funded loans. So we want to make sure that you have that information as well. Other myths that we often hear is that I'm not a straight A student. Financial aid is not dependent on you being a straight A student. Financial aid is based on the FAFSA information and all of that information putting together to see what you're eligible for in financial aid. So being a straight A student is not necessarily important. Um, there's not a lot of financial aid available. There are all types of financial aid and that's why it's so important to fill out the FAFSA because we want you to be able to understand what types of aid you are eligible for by filling out the FAFSA. It'll tell you if you have eligibility for grants and for the federally funded loans. So we want to be sure you're always filling out the FAFSA to see all your possibilities. Maybe we could negotiate a better deal. We often hear that as well. And that really isn't a possibility. So the thing that we want to do is make sure that you have a clear understanding of the costs and the financial aid that you will be eligible for and what are their savings and types of things that you can do to take care of those expenses. So let's talk about the FAFSA. You have probably all been filling out the FAFSA for next fall and spring and we opened, it opened up on October 1st and this is for the fall of 2021 to the spring of 2022. And when you're filling this FAFSA out, you're using your 2019 income information and tax year information. We had a priority date of November 15th for incoming freshmen, but that is not a deadline, it's just a priority date. So we want you to be sure that you are filling out your FAFSA if you haven't already, and be sure you submit it and send it to NAU so that we can see what you would have in eligibility for financial aid purposes. So when you're filling out the FAFSA, the most important things that you're seeing is that that information is looking at how much money your family has earned, any savings. It's also looking at the total number of people in your household, the number of children in the household who are in college, and all of this comes together in an expected family contribution number, meaning what is this family expected to be able to pay towards the total cost of attendance? So estimated or expected family contribution. We'll take the, our cost of attendance, what it costs to go to NAU for a year, we'll subtract that expected family contribution number to come up with what types of financial aid you are eligible for. And that gives us the financial need so we can see what types of aid you might be eligible for. So when we're looking at that expected estimated cost of attendance, the COA, as you sometimes see it, it has several elements. So you're looking at direct costs, tuition, fees, money for books, money for housing, money for food. And typically, as an incoming freshman, you are going to be living on campus and having a meal plan. And so you'll see those items that we'll talk about a little bit later. The indirect costs for the year are your transportation and personal items. Transportation would be if you're living off campus, if you have a vehicle on campus, or if you are from another state and you're traveling during the year during breaks to come back and forth to campus. 
Personal items are all those personal items that you might think of over the course of the year. All your toiletries, um, clothing, a down jacket, some snow boots today, <laughs> and everything that you might need as personal items over the course of a year. So all of that together gives us our total cost of attendance, and then we will see what types of financial aid you're eligible for. So many of you have already received a financial aid offer letter from our office, and in that letter, it will show eligibility for certain scholarships, also eligibility for any type of financial aid. And you may see information about grants, federal grants, state grants, institutional grants. You may also see information about um, any type of loans that are available. And as I said earlier, the student is always available and is always eligible for uh, loans, the federally funded loans. As an incoming freshman, you'll be eligible for $5,500 in the subsidized and unsubsidized loan. That's the total. Parents may also apply for a loan, and that is the Parent PLUS loan. But parents, you do need to apply for that loan and be approved for that loan. And if you are, then that's another way that you can help out with your funds. The other items that we might look at are those self-help items, and that is the loans, as we said. So there's possibilities there. Students can work on campus as well, and that might be a possibility. Federal work study earnings may be available on your financial aid offer letter as well. So all of those things together give you your information about what you'll have. So let's take a look at calculating the cost of attendance. Every school that you're considering has a net price calculator on their site, and you should be checking on those to see what is the amount that the student is going to have to pay to the institution in a single year after grants and scholarships have been awarded. So that's a great way to take a look at what are your possibilities are. You can see the net price calculator for NAU at the link that's provided, and this is on the NAU website. Now let's take a look at an estimate for a possible school. Let's look at ABC University. Here is the information that we put together for the estimate cost of attendance. So you can see tuition and fees, books and supplies, housing and meals, money for other expenses, personal and transportation. We estimated $28,000 for the year. This is for a fall and a spring. And then we look to see that this student has received a financial aid offer letter, and in that offer letter, they've been offered a scholarship for $3,000 and a grant for $5,000. So their total estimated scholarships and grants is $8,000. To figure out the net price for this student, we take the $28,000 total cost of attendance minus the $8,000 to come up with $20,000. That's what the student is required to take care of then. So the estimated net price for this student is $20,000, the amount that they need to take care of over the course of the year. So what are the ways that we can reduce those costs and, and change this net price in any way that we can? So possible things that we can do is look at reducing the cost. Books and supplies, maybe not as much as we've estimated. Here at NAU, we estimate $1,000 for books and supplies over the course of the year. But you, your student and your family may not spend that much on books and supplies. Housing, depending on where you're living on campus, and also meals may change. Uh, the meal plan that you choose may be different than the ones we've estimated, so there might be some savings there. Other things that you might be able to do to help with this net price is to increase the amount of grants and scholarships. So if there's an opportunity to apply for scholarships, you always want to be doing that so that you have the best chance of getting a scholarship that can help on this net price. And of course, as we've said, apply for financial aid every year using the FAFSA so that you can see what types of federal financial aid, state and institutional financial aid you might be eligible for. So covering the net price, um, other things that you can do, as we said, savings and employment. The family is going to contribute an amount. You may have been saving for college over the years, and the student may have already been working or plans to work at some point. So that's another way that you can try and change these amounts as you go. 
Um, the federally funded loans, as we said, students are eligible for the federally funded loans and the parent can apply for loans as well. So as we look at that reduced net price for ABC University, let's see what's changed. So now we still have the same cost that the student has. We're still looking at that, but in this case, the student decided they aren't gonna spend the same amount on books and supplies as we've estimated, and they've been able to reduce a few of the other costs. So now their net cost is down to $25,550, their total cost of attendance, the estimated amount. They've gotten some other scholarships and some other aid, so now their scholarships and aid is $10,500, and their estimated net price is now lowered down to $15,050. So there are ways that you can add scholarships and grants and to maybe subtract some of the extra costs that you can get that net price down to something that you're able to take care of. So let's take a look at the estimated cost of attendance here at NAU. These figures are based on this year, fall of 2020 through the spring of 2021, and they are the estimates for next year. So as you can see, if you're an Arizona resident, a Western undergraduate exchange student, or a, a non-resident, these are your total costs of attendance, estimated costs for the year. This is for a fall and a spring. Next, we wanna look at our cost of attendance and budget worksheet. And this is really a tool that you can use that will really help you out as you're looking through all of the information and trying to put together a plan and a budget. So you wanna go out on the NAU website to the NAU Office of Scholarships and Financial Aid, and then under Getting Started, up in the left-hand corner, Incoming Students, Cost of Attendance Budget Worksheet. And this will bring up this worksheet. You can print this off, and you can print off several, so you can use it as a working document. And so um, what we will do here is be able to see uh, an example of what your actual net price will be, and also your costs and scholarships. So let's take a look at the first section. So in this first section, you can see the tuition and fees that we estimate for the year for a resident of Arizona, a non-resident, and a Western undergraduate exchange student. So those numbers are items that you want to keep in mind as you go to the bottom of the second page to enter in your tuition and fee amounts. The second section talks about the costs of attendance and also looks at the information for your housing and for the meal plans. And this is a good way to see, particularly for those of you who are going to be living on campus, these are the information that gives you that uh, estimates that you can use. If you're not going to be living on campus, you wanna take a nine month estimate. So what will your rent be for nine months? What will your ex food expenses be for nine months when you're plugging it into this worksheet? But these are estimates here on campus. And then other expenses um, that you might have, books and supplies, as we said. Here at NAU, we estimate $1,000 for books and supplies, but you may not spend that much. We estimate $2,200 for personal items. Again, toiletries and all your uh, laundry expenses and clothing, that type of thing. So again, you might not spend $2,200 in a year. And then finally, transportation. And again, this may be, if you have a vehicle on campus, you'll have to maintain it. But if you live here in Arizona and you don't have a vehicle on campus, you won't be spending $2,500 on transportation. But you may if you're traveling back and forth to home from various locations across the country. So that gives you those items. Then the next thing we want to take a look at is your financial aid. So those of you who have already received a financial aid award letter, you can take a look and see what are the types of scholarships and gift aid that I have already been offered. And you can plug that information in on the worksheet. So you come up with a total of gift aid. Then the next place that you want to talk about is self-help. And this is really important because it's looking at what have you been saving over time for college, so you can put that amount in. And again, we're looking at one year, a fall and a spring. So you want to put that amount in for your savings. And then uh, as the student going to take their loans, again, an incoming freshman will be eligible for $5,500 in the loans. And the parent can apply for a parent plus loan. 
if needed. Again, the parent has to apply and be approved for that loan before they will be eligible for that loan. So at the bottom of the worksheet, you are plugging in the numbers for your tuition and fees, for your information on any program fees, if you have a certain program or class fees, housing, your meal plan, or what you estimate for meals, your books and supplies, your personal items, and your transportation. That gives you your total cost uh, estimate. Then you want to subtract the gift aid that you see on your financial aid offer letter in your scholarships, and also any self-help that you're going to be using, whether that's savings or any of the loans. So when you take that total cost of attendance minus the, um, all the gift aid and other resources that gives you your net price or the remaining amount you may still owe or you might be having a refund if you have a number of scholarships. So very important that you use the worksheet and any one of the financial aid advisors here in our office are more than happy to meet with you by phone or by a Zoom meeting to go over these worksheets and help you plan for the next year. I want to talk a little bit about the timelines that we are following. And as I said, the FAFSA opened up on October 1st, and the financial aid priority date for the FAFSA, the filing date, was November 15th. It's not a deadline. So that was the best chance for some of the gift aid that's limited here at NAU. But you want to go ahead and fill out the FAFSA if you haven't already, because that's very important for us to be able to see what you're eligible for. Continuing students, their priority filing date, those students who are already attending NAU, is February 1st. And then beginning in December, we started at sending out the financial aid offer letters. And those offer letters went to the student's home address. And as that uh, information comes to you, then you can review that and then also use the worksheet as well. And again, we're happy to go over that information with you. And then beginning in June, we'll start sending out the financial aid information to continuing students. So at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Esther, and she's going to talk to us a little bit more about uh, scholarships and our website. Thanks, Esther. Thank you. And thank you for the valuable information you provided on federal financial aid, Chris. These next two slides um, provide a glimpse of our webpage, and that's the Office of Scholarships and Financial Aid webpage. This is very valuable information for both scholarships and financial aid. So as you see here, this is our main site, nau.edu forward slash OSFA. This next slide, our OSFA website has several categories. So depending on what information you are searching for, these several categories will help and assist you navigating your finances through NAU. For our merit-based tuition scholarships, our incoming freshmen are automatically considered for these tuition-based scholarships. They only apply to students attending the NAU Flagstaff Mountain Campus. Our students are considered for scholarships according to their residency classification, whether you're an Arizona resident, non-resident, or Western Undergraduate Exchange student, also known as WUI. Prior to the beginning of the semester, your official high school transcript is necessary to apply the scholarship award to your student account to pay tuition. Our first resident tuition scholarship is our Lumberjack Scholars Award. This is a four-year value worth over $40,000 for our NAU Flagstaff Mountain Campus students only. This does not cover fees or other expenses. To be eligible for this particular tuition scholarship, students must have a 3.5 unweighted core GPA, no letter grade lower than a B, no deficiency, and one high school retake is allowed. For this particular tuition scholarship, no ACT or SAT scores are considered. Please keep in mind, you must accept your offer no later than May 1st. Merit tuition scholarships for Arizona residents include the presidents. Eligibility is based on a 3.5 core GPA, and the tuition scholarship is valued at 8,000 per academic year. Our next scholarship for Arizona residents is the deans. Eligibility is based on a 3.0 to a 3.49 core GPA, and the tuition scholarship is valued at 5,000 per academic year. Our opportunity scholarship eligibility is based on 2.9 to a 2.99 high school core GPA, and the tuition scholarship is valued at 2,500 per academic year. For our Western undergraduate exchange students, also known as WUI, we have the gold and the blue tuition scholarship. For eligibility for the gold, 
students must have a 3.5 high school core GPA. The tuition scholarship for the gold um, is valued at 6,000 per academic year. A Ruby Blue tuition scholarship is valued at 5,000 per year. And the eligibility high school core GPA for this tuition scholarship is 3.0 to a 3.49. For our non-resident students, we have the President's Excellence Tuition Scholarship valued at 11,000 per academic year and requires a 3.5 core GPA. We also have the President's Award, which is valued at $9,000 per academic year and requires a high school core GPA of 3.0 to a 3.49. Please keep in mind that no test scores are required for the tuition scholarships I have just mentioned. Additional scholarship opportunities offered to our NAU students include the NAU Office of Scholarships and Financial Aid OSFA online scholarship application, which opened mid-January of 2021 and closes March 1st of 2021. In addition, we also have a list of our private donor scholarship opportunities for students. Arizona Community Foundation also offers scholarship opportunities for both in and out-of-state students. In addition to that, students may apply through civics clubs and organization, parents' places of employment, tribal affiliations, and local library resources. In addition to scholarship opportunities, our students may also look into departmental scholarships. Application deadlines will differ per department for the 2021-2022 academic school year. On this next slide, you will see private donor scholarships. This is a list of over 400 private donor scholarship opportunities that students may also look into. As you can see here, the students may filter according to deadline, scholarship name, amount, if the scholarship is need-based or if an essay is needed as well. They are sorted by deadline and students can create their own unique filter to which the scholarships can apply to them. Important reminders for our NAU students is to complete the application for financial aid if you have not already done so. You may still complete the application to see what type of federal aid you are eligible to receive. Submit all requested documentation as soon as possible, such as verification, tax documents, and so forth. Be sure to submit official transcripts in a timely manner to University Admissions Office. Visit our website for information on scholarships and financial aid at nau.edu forward slash OSFA. Also, check your NAU email and Louie on a regular basis as your NAU email is our main source of communication. NAU Office of Scholarships and Financial Aid online scholarship application opened January 15th and will be closing March 1st. Also, actively search throughout the year for private donor scholarships. To speak with a financial aid or scholarship expert, please call or email our office at 928-523-4951 or via email at financial.aid at nau.edu. We would like to thank you for joining us this evening and hope this information and resources provided will assist you in navigating your college finances. Be sure to tune in tomorrow to hear from the Office of the Dean of Students and Parent and Family Services. On behalf of Chris Lofquist, I'm Esther Cuellar. Good night and go Jacks.